Hello, my name is Kishwani. S K E S H W A N I Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the T's. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the study manual for the T's. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problems that we are about to solve are the ones that you will find on page number 200. And 56. Please turn to it. Page number 256 and today is our lesson number 64. Problem number 9 is what we are about to do. Problem number 9. 6 times 5 plus 7 divided by 4 minus 7 times 2 plus 3 times 3. Now if you recall, this problem has to do with the concept that we, done, that we learned on the very first day of our lessons. On the first 60 days, if you have not watched these videos on day number 1 through 60, we did the exercises, math exercises that are to be found on page 50 through 110. And on the very first day, we covered the concept of what is known as PEMDAS on day 1. PEMDAS is just a mnemonic device that help us, helps us memorize the order of operation, the proper order of operation. P stands for parentheses. Parentheses are to be done first, which is exactly what we're going to do here. We'll take care of this parentheses first. So we have 6 times, 6 times 5 plus 7, which is 12, divided by 4, and then it goes on to say 7 times 2 plus 3 times 3. What comes next? We have done the parentheses. Next, next comes exponents. We have no exponents in this expression. We move on to multiplication and division. And if you recall from day number one, what we said is that multiplication and division they have the same priority. They have the same priority just as addition and subtraction have the same priority. In other words, if you have to do a bunch of multiplication and a bunch of division, it doesn't matter what order you do them in, you'll always get the same answer. For example, for example, 10 divided by 2, 10 divided by 2 is 5. 5 times, uh, let's see if I can find something simpler before I actually go on. 5 times 4, 5 times 4. So if we do 10 divided by 2, we get 5. 5 times 4, of course, we get 20. Now, on the other hand, instead of doing it like this, instead of doing it like this, if, you had, if we had done 10 divided by 2, 10 divided by 2 times 4, instead of going in this order, had we done 10 times 4, 10 times 4 is 40, 40 divided by 2, again we get the answer of 20. We get the same answer, you see? We get the same answer because multiplication and division have the same priorities. Just like addition and subtraction, 3 plus 5 minus 4, 3 plus 5 minus 4 is same as 3 minus 4 plus 5. It doesn't change anything. Addition and subtraction have the same priority. So because they have the same priority, just listen carefully, there is, a reason. there is a reason why I'm making such a big fuss about it. Pay attention. Because, because multiplication and division have the same priority, we have two choices here. We have two options open, open to us. There are two paths we can take. We can either do 6 times 12 and then multiply the result by 4. Do 6 times 12 and take the product of 6 and 12 and then divide that by 4. But that will be more work. Because it will take a few seconds to figure out what 6 times 12 is. Not only, not only it takes a few seconds to figure out what 6 times 12 is, but once you have done so, now we are dealing with another big number, which you will have to divide eventually by 4. Why make your life miserable? Do the simpler word first. Let's do the simpler word first. Let's divide 12 by 3 first. 12 divided by 3 is, but 12 divided by 4 is 3. So we end up with 6 times 3, which is much easier to figure out. So we have 6 times 3 minus 7 times 2 plus 3 times 3. And now we do our multiplication. So we have three multiplication. We have to do them to get those multiplication first, and then we do the addition and subtraction. So six times three is eighteen minus fourteen plus nine. Eighteen minus fourteen is four plus nine, giving us a final answer of thirteen. That's all. The answer is thirteen. Let's do the next one, shall we? Number 10. In number 10, they're asking us which of the following 
is the percent equivalent to what is the percent equivalent of 0 0.003 now listen before we do before we do the problem as it is presented to us let's do a simpler version okay watch what happens I need the room so we need to get rid of it can you tell me what is the percent equivalent of 0.5 if someone gives us decimal uh, someone gives us uh, in decimal uh, an amount in decimal 0 0.5 0 0.5 is half half is what percent that's what they're asking half represents what percent of something well half represents 50 percent and how do we go from here to here well what we take what we do is we take our decimal and move it two places and the decimal ends up here 0.25 is what percent for 0.25 this is a quarter a quarter is 0.25 which is 25 percent again we take our decimal move it two places it becomes 25 percent this becomes we have to put a percentage sign otherwise it makes no sense without the percentage sign without the percentage sign what we'll end up saying will be something utterly insane what we'll end up what will what we will end up saying is 0.5 equals 50 0.5 does not equal 50 0.5 equals 50 percent hence the decimal percentage equivalent Similarly, 0.25 equals 25 percent. 0 0.1, 0 0.1, again we take our decimal, move it two places, it equals 10 percent. 0.01, how much is 0 0.01? What's the percentage equivalent of 0 0.01? Again, take the decimal, move it two places, it becomes 1 percent. And finally, we have 0 0.003. 0 0.003. We take our decimal, move it two places, one, two. So the decimal ends up here and it equals 0.3%. Well, the decimal is going to shift from here, one place and two places, it will end up right before three. It becomes 0.3%. 0 0.03, on the other hand, 0 0.03 would have been 3% because we would have moved the decimal two places, it would have been 3%, but it's not. It's not 0 0.03, it is 0 0.003, which is 0.3%. That's all. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.